Some of the most exciting advances in science come because of collaborations across different disciplines. In this case, the cooperation between a mechanical engineer and an Egyptologist opens up a new window into the past and also inspires a whole field of innovation through biomimicry. Professor Richard Johnston is based in the engineering department at Swansea University. So how does engineering connect with ancient mummies? So on our previous campus, the engineering building was actually right opposite our Egypt Centre, which is an Egyptology museum, and kind of recently got a new X-ray microtomography machine, which we would use in engineering to look at things like jet engine parts or composite materials, typically human-made structures. But I knew someone who was in Egyptology and I'd been talking to them, um, and they passed me on to the Egypt Centre. And when I saw the animal mummy samples that were down there, we just thought, actually, that's perfect for X-ray technologies. The X-ray microtomography machine is similar to a medical CT scanner, but generating three-dimensional images 100 times greater in resolution. This allows the animal's remains to be analysed in extraordinary detail, right down to the smallest bones and teeth. Historically, they'd actually physically unwrap mummified samples to see what's inside and obviously that's incredibly destructive whereas by non-destructively x-ray imaging everything stays in that same position that it was thousands of years ago. For the first time ever the young scientist could peer into the undisturbed centres of some of the artefacts in the museum, time capsules into the past. A mummified cat yielded a surprising discovery. It looks like an adult cat size, but actually the wrappings are really thick. And when you get down to it and you see that skull that's inside, it's a lot smaller. It was effectively a kitten. Virtual reality software meant that I could see different things within that data. So now I would literally put myself virtually within the mummified animal. I essentially make the mummified animal as big as my house and I'm effectively touring through that, wandering through it, looking for a fracture or a break that we hadn't seen before when we'd been looking at 3D data on a 2D screen. The researchers made a 3D printout of the snake skull to give to a biologist, who was then able to identify it as a juvenile Egyptian cobra. Even if we'd unwrapped that mummified package, we would have ended up with a skull around this big, which is actually quite difficult to to get the species from. So being able to then scale that up and 3D print it to something this large was really, really useful. This immersive approach was able to throw a new light on ancient Egypt. Some of the, the work we did, again, years after getting the data, it was really once delving deep into that 3D volumetric data inside virtual reality, it was really, really useful for trying to understand more about the animals and to give the right information to the experts that we were working with. Did you ever think when you were examining jet engine components using the same technology that it would lead to this kind of investigation? Not at all, actually. Um, through this project, it's, it's shown the power of X-ray technology for, for me, and so I work far more outside of engineering now. I work, I, we're scanning birds, insects, human tissue. We're looking at lots more than just those engineering materials now. Professor Johnston now leads a team focusing on bio-inspiration, creating powerful images of tiny creatures. They're able to draw ideas from nature which can have a practical use in mechanical engineering. We've been imaging a plant hopper, so it was discovered that they have uh, mechanical gears between their legs. We're the first to kind of see them in three dimensions and try and understand their shape because they don't look like human design gears at all. So we're trying to understand if evolution has led to a improved gear shape that could be useful for engineering. Other species have inspired him too. We have a campus that has its own beach and so it was a curiosity thing. We have barnacles very nearby, we x-rayed them. And it was when we did that, I came to the microscope and saw an image of 
one tiny bit of the barnacle, the microstructure, and I hadn't seen anything that looked like that since I was working on jet engine materials with Rolls-Royce. A jet engine has to be able to tolerate a great deal of stress from dramatic changes in temperature during use. A barnacle also survives in extreme conditions. It lives in the intertidal zone, so it's half of its time spent in the water, half of its time spent out to the water, usually with waves crashing on it. And so the biomineralization or the underlying microstructure of barnacle could be tailored to different mechanical constraints linked to its environment. If there are challenging environments, then you need to do very interesting things with the materials that make up those structures. So yeah, it's, it's strange how we see these parallels um, between nature and engineering. And typically nature got there first.